Hey everybody, welcome to GIS Chops. My name's Jeff. In one of my earlier videos, I had a request in the comments to show how to geo-reference an image. That was by Ethan Mayfield. So I decided to work that into my schedule, and today we're going to show you how to geo-reference an image in ArcGIS Pro. So let's get to it. I can't fly around, okay? I can't do anything. That's not true. No one can read a map like you. I'm going to first show you the process, then I'll go through some things you need to pay attention to, some gotchas, and the particulars of, of setting it up. So I used the Traverse tool to enter this subdivision boundary. Now I'm going to geo-reference the plat map, or the subdivision plat, using the line features as the reference point, the corners more specifically. So here's my image. I'm going to right click it and say add to current map. Then that's going to ask me if I want to build pyramids. I'm going to say no because it takes too long to build them. This way it gets the image into my map quicker. And I don't think having the pyramids helps it draw any faster, so let me know in the comments if you think it does. Now that I've got the image added to my map, it's selected. If I go to the imagery tab and click on the geo reference button, it opens up the geo reference tab. And these groups are aligned in the order that you do them. So the first group is you prepare your image, then you adjust it, then you review, and then you save. And at any time, if you want to cancel, you just close the GeoReference tab. The Locate tool is here to help you locate the place where your image is going to go, but I'm already zoomed to that area, so I don't need it. The Set SRS lets you set the spatial reference system for the image. I just want it to use the map's spatial reference, and that's what it does by default, so I'm going to leave that alone. This is the first thing I do. I, with the image selected, you click on Fit to Display. And this happens sometimes. If you come to appearance, see my image is all white. If you come to appearance and change this stretch type to none, then it will draw your image. And that's a, that's a bit of a gotcha. So now I've got my image fit to the display, but it's a little big. So I can use these other tools to get it in about the right place. When I click on the Move tool, it makes the image semi-transparent. So I'm going to move it to match this corner. Now that I have the image near to where I want it, I'm going to scale it. When you scale it, this yellow dot appears, and this is an anchor. So if I hold down the Control key and click near that corner, now I need to zoom out to the full extent of the image, and you can see it has handles around the edge of the image. So now I'm going to drag that handle down to scale it to about where I want it. You can rotate it. This one doesn't need to be rotated. This flip button, it flips it horizontally. So it would make things backwards if you flipped it horizontally. It would make the text backwards. Fixed Rotate will rotate it left or right 90 degrees. So now we're going to start adding control points. I never bother with these two buttons. I just use Add Control Points. So now I zoom in to my corners. Click a spot on the source or your image and then click where you want it to go on your target. And you can see the snaps to my features. Then it bumps the image to, to line up with your control point. Now I'm going to do the opposite corner up here. Add control points. You do the source, then the target. So that's two. My transformation method is first order polynomial and it says requires at least three control points. 
So I'm going to zoom to this corner, hold down the shift key to suspend snapping, click on my source, then to my target. You can see there's like a little helper text box there. So that's probably good enough, but let's look and see how it did on this corner. That's pretty good. I usually do four points, but I don't think I need to do four points. Once I'm done with my control points, you can review them. If you click this control point table, it's going to open up a table of your control points. Then you can select them here and it highlights them in the map. And you can select them in the map and then delete the selected control point. I'll do it just so you can see. So it deleted this one in this corner. Now I'm going to go at it again. So if you screw up, you can open this table and select the control point that's bad. And then to finish, I just click Save. Now the image is geo-referenced. If I remove that... So now that I've removed the image from my map, I'm going to come to the file system. And you see that two files were created with the same name as the image. And if we look at those in Notebook++, the XML document has the spatial reference. So in combination, these two files tell ArcMap where to draw that image. So that's how you geo-reference an image. Some things you might want to consider. Most of the images I get are in PDF format. So I have to translate them from PDF to TIFF. ArcGIS Pro currently doesn't have a PDF to TIFF geoprocessing tool. ArcMap does. So I usually process it through ArcMap. There are some ideas on Esri's idea site asking them to allow us to convert PDFs to TIFF with ArcGIS Pro. There's another one that is asking to skip the middleman. Let's just geo-reference PDFs. And I think both of those are under review, so hopefully that'll happen. I'll put some links in the description so you can go vote those up so they get more attention. And maybe we'll get those in the next release or the next couple releases. Another issue I have is Sometimes the image doesn't draw correctly, and it's how I showed you while I was geo-referencing. You come to this, uh, we have to add it again. So we add it, no. See there, it did it again. It went to a blank white image. So you have to come to appearance, change this stretch type to none. Maybe. There it goes, yep. I don't know if there's a setting in the options that allow us to say, hey, don't don't stretch it, stretch it by none, not by percent clip. You can try out these other ones. So everything works except for percent clip and that's what it defaults to. So if you know of an option that you can set that gets rid of that, that changes it from percent clip to none or one of the others, let me know in the comments. Another thing to consider is when you geo-reference an image, you want your points spread out. If I would have done this one, this corner, this corner, and this corner, my geo-referencing wouldn't have been as accurate because it's kind of a narrow area here. It wants, that's why I went from this corner to this corner and this corner. And to be really accurate, you're going to want a fourth corner. So that wraps up geo-referencing in ArcGIS Pro. If that helped you out, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video. I try to upload every Tuesday. Sometimes that happens, but I definitely upload at least once a week. This past week, my wife and I had lunch with an old high school friend that started up a YouTube channel. He does workouts for people that are over 40, that are middle-aged, where their joints aren't quite what they used to be, they can't lift heavy anymore. So these workouts are modified for people that, like me, who are getting up there in age. 
and but still want to be active, that still want to go out and do stuff like our Timpanogos hike and King's Peak hike. And that hike's coming up. We did it. It was grueling. We got a video coming up. Anyway, go over to GPP Fitness Over 40. Check out their channel. They're adorable. They're really cool people. So go give them a subscribe. Tell them I sent you in the comments. Now, if you want to check out my other videos in Tool Belt Tuesday, they're going to be over here. My latest video's up there. And as always, my subscribe button's up there. We'll see you next time.